Hello, I'm Bernard Schwetzler. Welcome to my video blog, uh, Questions of Doubt in Corporate Valuation. And our today's question of doubt is delevering and relevering of beta factors. Shall we use gross debt or shall we use net debt? So, um, as you may know, for firms that are not listed on the stock exchange, it is difficult to come up with a reasonable estimate for the beta factors and the cost of equity. And one way to tackle this problem is to calculate industry betas, to estimate industry betas, and then to adjust them and transfer them on a firm that is not listed and that is doing business in the same industry. So you see here, for instance, uh, from our website FinExpert, we provide data for German industry betas. And you see here, this is the automotive industry beta estimate of 1.25, which is generated by exactly the same way as a firm industry, uh, sorry, firm um, betas are derived by a regression analysis of the sector index uh, against uh, a market index. And so you see 1.25 is our estimate for the automotive industry for the equity beta of this industry. So, but as we know, unfortunately, beta factors are depending on the leverage of the firm. And so we may use these 1.25 for other firms in the automotive industry, just under the condition that the capital structure of uh, the firm that we look at is equal to the one uh, of the industry average. If this is not the case, then we have to run a particular procedure that is called the delevering and relevering procedure of the beta factor, just uh, to arrive at uh, the specific beta of the firm to be valued. So, and the question is then for this procedure, shall we use the gross factor or shall we use the net debt leverage factor? That's the question that we are going to, to tackle today. And you can see here, this is just highlighting the procedure. Uh, for this example, we already used the net debt leverage ratio. So you see here, 1.25 was the beta estimate for the equity beta of the automotive industry. And now we look at uh, the net debt to equity ratio of the industry, which is here also given in the FinExpert table to be 1.08. And you see here, then we delever um, the industry beta and arrive at 0 0.34 as being the asset beta, the operating asset beta of the automotive industry. And our firm has a different leverage ratio. It has a net debt to equity ratio of two. That is, it is higher levered than the industry average. And now we apply simply the reverted uh, firm, um, the reverted leverage equation, and we arrive then at a beta for our firm, the specific firm of 1.69. So that's the basic idea, relevering and uh, de sorry, delevering and relevering of this of this beta to make it applicable for the firm that is not listed. But the question is then still, shall we use this equation that is the well-known leverage uh, impact on the equity beta, so the levered beta is the unlevered beta times one plus the leverage ratio times one minus the tax rate, the corporate tax rate, or shall we apply, as you can see here, for the leverage ratio, the net debt over equity ratio, um, just for our delever and relever procedure. So uh, when tackling this question, then uh, we should be aware that uh, what we're actually saying by transferring betas between uh, different firms uh, in the same industry um, that we assume that the operating risk of these firms is comparable. Yeah? So not their total risk, but only their operating risk. And that means that we assuming here by this uh, adjustment that the operating asset beta is the same for all firms in the same industry. And the operating asset beta is the beta of a firm that is all equity finance, that has no debt, and that has also not have any excess cash or any financial assets. And that makes it clear that this adjustment should be best run based on net debt leverage ratios. Yeah? So here we highlight again this additivity principle uh, of the beta factors that uh, the beta 
of all assets of the firm, the unlevered beta of the firm is the weighted average over the beta of the operating business and of the cash position and the financial assets position. And so what we're actually interested in is this here, the operating asset beta of the industry. And so if we now delever, of course, as we can see again from the risk proportion here, uh, what we have here as the 1.25 in the automotive industry example is the levered equity beta. And if we want to make the step to the operating asset beta of the industry, we then have to use the net debt to equity ratio uh, for our leverage beta equation. And that means that what we get then by delevering, that is from here to here, we are interested in the operating asset beta and we use the net debt to equity ratio. And then for the relevering, when we have calculated the operating asset uh, beta of the firm, we use again the net debt to equity ratio of our particular firm, just as we have seen here in this example. So um, the question that arises then again um, is, is there a condition or are there certain circumstances that make sure that even though we use the gross debt to equity ratio, we still arrive at the right, at the right value for our adjusted equity bet of the firm. Uh, and uh, I hope that this slide makes clear that uh, yes, there are conditions where this is not an error, but these conditions are rather strict. Yeah? You see here, the idea is, we start with the same input. This is uh, our equity beta of the industry. And here we delever and relever with a net debt to equity ratio. And here we delever and relever with a gross debt to equity ratio. So you see here we have the same starting point. And so you see what we derive here is the correct operating asset beta of the industry by using the net debt to equity ratio. When using the gross debt to equity ratio, we end up by the, the asset beta of all the assets in the industry, including the financial assets and the excess cash. Yeah? And then if we write on and uh, here relever again with our net debt to equity ratio of the firm, then we end up at the correct equity beta of the firm. And if we do this again with the gross debt to equity ratio of the firm, only by chance we arrive at the same output then for the equity beta of the firm. And the condition is obviously that the two mistakes that we make here using the wrong leverage for delevering and using the wrong leverage for relevering must exactly compensate each other and offset each other. And this is the condition that is going to hold in order to make this mistake to disappear. You see that these two ratios of the net debt to equity ratio of uh, one plus this factor for the firm and one plus this factor for the industry has on the left hand side to be equal to on the right hand side the gross leverage affected ratios of these two things. Yeah? Only if this condition is going to hold, the two mistakes is going to cancel each other uh, or are going to cancel each other out. Yeah? So, and that is clear that in practice, these conditions are rarely ever met. Yeah? So in that sense, again, the right answer is use this equation for delivering and relevering beta factors. Thank you for today.